Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Well, good morning. Welcome to ISH Digital 2021. I'm Lisa Pavichitz, and on behalf of World Architects, I'd like to welcome you to our series of talks in cooperation with Messe Frankfurt in the context of ISH Digital 2021. I'd like to welcome you, and from Tuesday until Friday from 8 to 9, we have special talks for you that you can find in the media library in case you missed it or if you want to uh, re look again. And uh, architects uh, successfully conducted guided tours in person at the trade show. And this year, we wanted to offer you an alternative. And we put together a group of manufacturers that we would have liked to visit and that are usually worth your visit. And uh, we'll put that into the, check so into the chat so browse around. And uh, you will also get further training points uh, after uh, the talk. You will get a mail address. You can turn to that in order to get your certificate. The Chamber of Architects in Hesse and Reinhard Pladnett in Baden-Württemberg uh, accepted uh, this. And um, they accept these points for further training. Before I give the floor to the next speakers, I'd like to introduce them. Anna Lynn Schmidt from Broich and Anna von Broich. Anna von Broich studied law at Humboldt University in Berlin. Anna Lynn Schmidt von Broich studied architecture at the ETH Zurich and the KIT Karlsruhe. They got to know each other when studying economics in when studying real estate in Frankfurt. And both of them felt like they wanted to work together, so they created the Nidos studio in Dusseldorf. That's their practice. And they dealt with architectural history, a transformation of housing topology, and the influential parameters from business and politics. They do this at the architectural department of Siegen, the University of Siegen. And today they'll talk about a bathroom in residential housing, and we'll hear about the evolution of the bathroom. I wish you much uh, fun listening to the two speakers. I give the floor. Just love good morning, you two. I'll give the floor to you. Well, good morning. Thank you for the introduction and the invitation. I have a brief question. Can you see the presentation now? Okay, wonderful. So thank you very much for inviting us, and thank you uh, for giving us the chance to talk about the bathroom and the um, in residential uh, culture. The bathroom is very important to us. We work in a very holistic manner, and we would like to start with the presentation, and we would like to give you an overview um, what we want to talk about and uh, what the structure of our talk is. And we'll look at uh, rehabilitation projects uh, and projects in the field of um, the protection of historic buildings. We'll talk about the history and evolution of the bathroom as part of residential uh, housing culture. And we'll address the question as how, of how with existing houses, you can you know refer to the context, to materials and things, and how you can then develop uh, Contemporary bathrooms, I'll tell you what is the essential character of a contemporary bathroom with what kind of materials and products we work in. You'll see that. So first of all, uh, we would like to introduce our team, the structure of our company and our corporate philosophy. And then I'll start with the project stories. And uh, there are four projects that we completed. And they serve as reference points. Now, in the meantime, uh, we are a team of 10 people at Nidos. And what is special for us is that we are both architects, so we are a classic uh, architectural practice, and we also develop our own projects. And this combination results from our background, which is interdisciplinary. <laughs> I'm um, a lawyer, and Ms. Schmidt is an architect. And because of this, we got together, we studied uh, real estate 
business and we wanted to bring together architecture and project development and this way we felt that we had more leeway for um, designing things or shaping things. Now, ever since 2016, we've been working together. And this year, we've been celebrating our fifth anniversary. And last year, after we uh, grew a little, we moved to a from a fixtures factory uh, in a backyard in uh, Düsseldorf. Now, this is a project that we worked on ourselves. Normally, or let's say in most cases, we work in residential housing. But this project, you know, just came along and uh, we felt like it would be great if we moved into this building. So we dealt with the, the question of commercial housing. There are nice bathrooms in here too, but we will not show you uh, these because we're talking about uh, residential culture. This is the working space on the inside. This is where our team works. This is where, where we develop our ideas together. So basically, as um, my co-speaker said, the combination of project development and architecture is something that we see as something very fruitful because in the past uh, we noticed, you know, both of us come from the classic areas uh, where uh, these uh, types of topics are looked at as separate topics and um, as opposites, basically. And we felt that a lot would be lost if uh, you don't use the dovetailing of, of these two areas architecture and law. And I think if you bring these things together, you can release a lot of creative potential. And that's what we work on. That's how we work. In the meantime, you know, um, we get, um, we're asked to work as architects and uh, we have a mix of architectural um, jobs for third parties and project development that we run ourselves. Now, this is not one of our employees, mind you, but this is a picture that goes to show how much importance or how important uh, taking a bath is in the history of human culture and has been like this for a long time. Like when you think back of the Romans and the Greeks, you know, they knew the bath and the bath um, was very important to them. But uh, the masses uh, went to public baths. So this was something that we know from history, the public baths of the Romans. But the bathroom we know developed in the 19th century. And it resulted from a different uh, way of seeing um, the body, of regarding the body as something private, as something to be concealed. But at the time, you know, bathrooms were not so advanced. Uh, there, were, um, there was no running water, for instance. Uh, um, there was, you know, furniture you could use to wash yourselves. And then the 30s bathroom became more important. There were big rooms with lots of glass. So that was something you would recognize again today. In the 1950s, people uh, took a step back with the wet cell, which was more like a small room in the 1950s and in the decades following. And it was only in the 1970s and 80s that the bathroom kind of uh, was seen as part of interior design and the design of uh, an apartment or um, uh, as part of housing. And in the 1980s, people started thinking about more uh, of uh, an individual 
approach, an individualized approach to the bathroom. And today, the bathroom has become part of residential housing culture as part of your living quarters, as part of an area where you can kind of retreat to, um, to enjoy. So this has become a key part of living. <clears throat> And now we would like to speak about uh, an early project in our in the course of our cooperation. This was a city palais in Düsseldorf built in 1897. And uh, there were some interventions over the years. This is a historic monument. This is the part that is um, that was built in 1897, and in the course of time, uh, another wing was added towards the right. The right-hand wing was added, as you can see, during the war. The building was damaged. Uh, the nice roof was lost, and in the 1950s, this two and a half story um, extension was added, which is also under um, the protection of historic monuments. This was used as an office building, and some of the elements on the interior, which are also protected, were covered, um, so they were not damaged. And in 2016, and even earlier, I mean 2016, we finished our work, so we were able to restore these things without damage. And now this building is being used as residential housing again, which you know, was the original plan. Originally, this building belonged to an entrepreneur's family in Dusseldorf, and now we have 5,000 units in this building. And this is what the building looks like in its entirety. Now, we have two stories. You can see this uh, on the floor plan. Um, and uh, this, the original was turned into a three-story house. So the floor plan covers one floor. So we have five uh, units. Here, we have the original floor plan. This, apparently, uh, was the home of a wealthy family. They were able to afford a bathroom. That was different in the case of the population at large. So um, in the, on the ground floor, on the first floor, there was a bathroom, and there was a, a toilet for guests. And there were master bedrooms and uh, living rooms or where you would receive people. You can see on the first floor, first upper floor, you can see a bathroom, a toilet, and an interior a courtyard. And in the course of their development, um, these uh, apartments were sold. We were able to. Uh, work together with our customers. We were able to address the uh, desires of our clients. And what is special about uh, these flats is uh, especially um, the um, raised ground floor. Uh, we wanted to stick to these uh, three stories. On the left and the right, uh, we developed uh, the floor plan. There's the main staircase, and then you get into the middle of the rooms, and that's where you have the more public spaces, cooking, living, eating, that's what you would do there. And then the customers wanted to establish an area for the ladies, for the gentlemen, and uh, bathrooms. And on the top, you find the ladies' area, which is um, accessed and on the top right, you can go to the ladies' area and then to the bathroom and the bathroom. And on the other side, you have the 
area for the gentleman. That was uh, the gentleman's uh, room um, in the original floor plan, the master bathroom. And this uh, goes towards the back, there's a small area with a staircase uh, going down. That also belongs to um, the flat, and then there's the gentleman's bathroom. You can see that here very nicely. So um, you can still see when this was built because the bathrooms are close to um, the bedrooms. This is the so-called Frankfurt bath, which became established in the uh, around 1900. And this is uh, like the predecessor of today's ensuite um, bathroom, and we like that. And it was designed like that from the very beginning, and we wanted to keep the separation of private and public and assign the bathrooms to the bedrooms. Well, here you get an impression. Of this area, uh, where you can see that it makes sense to get the overall impression of the entire flat. Uh, that is also the entry area. There are very many uh, wooden uh, wall covers, there's a fireplace elements uh, which we also considered and uh, which were put under monumental protection here a view to the new kitchen which was not there before so on the picture you get an impression of the uh, ceiling design uh, also under um, protection of public monuments and in the design of the kitchen of course we also want to establish a reference to the materiality to what uh, already was there in order to give a holistic impression of the place in the development of the ladies bathroom we found this photograph of the architect Ernst Multing the original architect uh, from Düsseldorf he erected several uh, residential buildings in Düsseldorf the photograph is not from the same building but from the same time it served as a reference in order to uh, develop the atmosphere for the ladies bathroom here a, a view of the entry area uh, with uh, marble wall cladding, uh, marble uh, uh, staircase. So marble can be found in many places of the building. And this is how we work as a matter of principle. If you work in a stock of buildings, be it a uh, building under a mo public uh, monumental protection or elsewhere, we always uh, see how we can refer to the materials used on the respective surfaces. In the next step, we don't, do not uh, first consider the furniture and the room design of the respective uh, bathrooms. But first of all, we put the mood, the atmosphere into the focus. That is to say, we want to work with the same materials. What shall be the appointment of the rooms for what customers is the room meant? What is the personal character? These are all issues which play an extremely important role in this atmosphere, and we refer to this specifically. Maybe quickly back. <laughs> what is important, uh, as you have already mentioned, uh, to show who the user of the bathroom is, especially nowadays, uh, when, in our understanding, the bathroom is closely linked to the living atmosphere, and uh, it almost plays uh, the most central role in living because this is the arrival point in the morning, the first room which is used, and in the evening, uh, it is the last one which you really use. Hence, uh, this is uh, the place of rest in a hectic uh, day, uh, which is highly frequented now. And it plays an important role uh, that uh, the bathroom, in our opinion, radiates uh, calm and a restful atmosphere which fits fully to the residents, especially during the sensitive days of the day, especially early morning and late before going to bed. In this special case, it's the ladies' bathroom. Fortunately, 
uh, with the buyer of uh, uh, the uh, place, we were fortunate uh, that the lady was very open for our contextual approach, also considering the history. And um, of course, we also wanted to add a contemporary component. It, it was not only about the reconstruction of uh, past uh, bathroom design, but the link of what was there, the materials which are, were there, and um, the inspiration about, uh, in the bathroom in this way, as it has been shown. And then we want to show the transformation to the today's atmosphere in a contemporary bathroom which can be used efficiently. Hence, it shall not be an artful thing to use it. And it became clear, clear very quickly in this presentation that we work with uh, bright and dark uh, marble. Wood should play a role also in this uh, dark appointment. And in cooperation, it became clear quickly that a powder type shade should also play a role. And this led to the entire color concept. Here, you can see how the bathroom is designed. There was the wish that there should be a shower, but also a bathtub. The bathroom is a relatively open, flowing room. And yet, as we see later on the photographs, it gets certain zones which are allocated. The bathtub is in kind of a protected area, an area of recovery. Therefore, it's also kind of hidden a little bit. The shower corresponds to contemporary ideas. Uh, an access without uh, steps is enabled. And apart from the wood ceiling, the new uh, floor cover was introduced with floor, uh, underfloor heating so that we could work without any steps. Here, the view into the bathroom from the area of the bathtub to the right hand side, you see the wooden uh, part which was put on a mon monumental protection from dating back to the past. And then you see the new elements added, like the marble, the zoning with the dark uh, parts in the individual areas, both on the wall and also on the floor. Then the sanitary objects, which have a kind of historic appointment, but yet correspond to the contemporary needs. The slightly powdery shade on the walls can be seen, and then on the other side, the niche where the bathtub stands. And uh, to the buyer, it was very important in this case that uh, the bathroom gets a special dwelling uh, quality, which is supported by the fact that uh, pieces of art were suspended on the wall. And thus, uh, the bathroom becomes a kind of a living room instead of just uh, be being an inferior uh, service function. Well, in this case, uh, the uh, bathroom is inside, of course, and yet it has the atmosphere of a living room of high quality uh, with high dwelling quality. And this is uh, what we resolve by the zoning of the bathroom, for example, also by the lighting concept, as you can see here in this picture. The bathtub uh, is uh, put in a more a private zone further back, and thus special uh, lighting was chosen, uh, giving the zone uh, the special atmosphere with this illumination. And uh, this distracts from the fact that there is no window at all. And uh, yet uh, the zone gives an inviting atmosphere. On the other uh, side, uh, the gentleman's uh, bathroom, uh, where we also want to establish some reference, and we also worked with contemporary uh, elements. The color concept, the material concept, uh, distinguishes uh, hardly. Uh, but, but it strongly is distinguished in the materials used. The color design is, is a bit different with an aquatype tone. The uh, 
wooden parts are also a little bit brighter and also in order to be better integrated in the entire concept. Since the bathroom is in the center, which is not that generous, corresponds to a, cl a classical shower uh, type bathroom, any uh, uh, rather, but it yet shall reflect kind of a special quality. And uh, practically speaking, it's quite often forgotten that you should integrate it in such a way that uh, when you move in uh, later on, uh, new elements, uh, shelves, uh, 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 <coughs> shall not be added if, uh, artificially, but we want to have this uh, approach right from the beginning to have a possibility for the insertion of uh, high uh, sh uh, shelves and uh, wardrobes and all these washing areas with the shower zones and so forth. Here you see the bathroom with the uh, allocation of the objects so that is quite classical. As said, uh, the uh, challenge was that it, this uh, center position was uh, there, but this could not be resolved by this different zoning because it's more cramped for space. We worked with the light uh, ceiling, as we know it from museums, small light points under a textile roof, uh, which gives the impression of a skylight and it, uh, and, uh, it brings uh, daylight quality into the bathroom. The materials used to uh, uh, bridge the gap to the ladies' bathroom, uh, but uh, they give a much more uh, clean and masculine look uh, here in contrast to the ladies' bathroom. In the floor covers, uh, we worked uh, with the uh, freezes um, uh, and the foot glass were uh, added uh, because it contributes a better appointment. In this highly uh, differentiated design, uh, we wanted to make clear, uh, clear that we wanted to reduce everything to the uh, essential, uh, for example, by the shower cladding, which is not made in marble because this would be too much in such a small room. But we have a uh, uh, glass surface in certain colors. You also see this in the washing elements, which you don't see that well in the, on the photograph. But you can see that there's some black marble and some wooden elements on the surface, uh, which you also see on the other side. Uh, with this uh, uh, wall-type cabinet, which establishes the link between the two uh, uh, woods and uh, creates sufficient uh, room for storage. Well, this takes us to our second project. This is about a city house uh, in an uh, old city center of Düsseldorf uh, Kaiserswert, uh, old uh, city-type structure, old town. And the special challenge uh, was for us uh, that uh, the uh, um, public uh, monument had to be maintained, the historical monument atmosphere, in contrast to a high, highly uh, contemporary and individual approach inside. Here in this project, too, uh, we researched into the building and the context. We dealt with the uh, development of Kaiserswerth, the north, northernmost part of Düsseldorf, kind of, of a village atmosphere, rather. The core of the old city is a zone of maintaining uh, the atmosphere of public uh, monuments. Of course, the basic structure was to be maintained, as you can see in the background. Maybe the aerial photo is a little bit too small, but it shows uh, the proximity to the Rhine. Uh, from the outside, of course, the building had to be reconstructed. Before touching upon the interior design, very quickly the development of the layout. Here 
a family acquired the building in the course of the process, and thus uh, together we could develop the layouts. The special thing in this building is that people are living on four levels in the ground floor. Well, the building has two wings in its basic structure, zoned by the staircase uh, in in the bottom, then you have for the in the entry area, a uh, great open area which serves as a living zone, uh, also with a, a water toilet and uh, a shower on top of the children's floor and the parents' level. So the clients wanted a contra contrast to the um, outer appearance that was more historic, and on the inside they wanted a minimalist design concept which would be contemporary, and this is uh, what it looks like. There's a lot of white, uh, smooth surfaces, lots of installations, uh, um, uh, wall-high uh, doors. Sorry, sorry, I have to interrupt you because we have 10 more minutes uh, uh, just to make sure you know how much time we have left. Okay, great. So this is a, um, we, we work with broad um, um, wooden flooring made of oak, and this is a reconstructed entry door, a rebuilt entry door, and I'd like to talk about the master bedroom on the roof in the attic on the right. And the bathroom is part of a whole zone, including the areas where you dress. On the opposite side, you, there's a bathroom. So there was a desire to work with few doors, sliding doors, that the bathroom is integrated in the master bathroom or integrates with the master bathroom of the parents. And because of the outer appearance, we wanted a more um, historic-looking bathroom because of the room structure that we just heard about. We felt like uh, we could move away from the original structures. And in the bathroom uh, concept, we wanted to continue along the lines of this free concept and to uh, take a more uh, contemporary approach. We use the cement, plaster, marble, um, and with elements that you that we, we found in the rest of the house, too. Bathroom is part of an open uh, room, or an open living space. The toilet is enclosed. The shower has no separation. The dimensions are selected in such a way that you don't need a separating door or something. It remains part of the room. And this is the result. What is interesting are the dimensions of the shower and that you don't need any separation or door. So this is open. There's no additional door to the sleeping. Uh, to the master bedroom, so this whole floor is one holistic unit. Here you can see the details. It was very important that this would be found, you know, this kind of uh, uniform design would be found in all bathrooms. These are pictures of the guest toilet and the children's bathroom. We didn't want to copy everything. It was supposed to be different. The children's bathroom was supposed to be different, and the guest toilet was supposed to be different too. But the materials and and the 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 language of of the design language was supposed to be similar. So and here we have uh, another project uh, on the island of Zilt. Uh, this is a holiday home. It's. Uh, it used to be a farmer's house uh, built uh, in the late 1980s. It was renovated recently. The 
context is that, you know, with these projects, it's all about what we find in our research. The context is uh, takes a wide, has a wide definition. It could be um, the um, landscape, society, mythological, whatever. Um, the location was not important. This is close to um, a, a national park uh, in Germany. Um, this is the national park uh, of, of the um, tidal flats. And uh, as a holiday home, uh, you know, these things um, take on a different meaning. These are uh, houses in the vicinity, typical reed building. Uh, there is a, the, 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 the um, brick is unified. There are um, white brick or um, brown brick and uh, reed um, roofs. And what is special about this house is the ground floor that is used as a living space. Um, so we were able to integrate um, sunlight, uh, daylight. Then there are then yeah, there's a bathroom, two massive bedrooms and a bath. And uh, on the um, first floor, uh, another. Um, Living, uh, living area with bathroom, bathroom. So this is part of the whole concept of the house. We used um, we used um, wooden flooring, classic wooden flooring, and the doors on the left. These are the original doors that we reworked. And the bathroom was supposed to use these uh, materials too that were used in this house in order to create a link and emphasize the link between the bathroom and the living quarters. These tiles were selected on purpose. Uh, they were also selected for the bathroom. Um, they had these um, rough edges. And that underlines this rural character of the reed-covered um, building. So here you can see this. And in this project, we worked with um, specific products of um, manufacturers. We worked with the Duravit. Duravit fit in well um, in this context. And um, we created a more contemporary um, appearance with a special profile with an uneven surface structure. And we combined this with the um, uh, with this kind of rough um, tile on the floor. And we wanted to, to find very clear structures and the floor plan, a lot of uh, space and the toilet is in a niche, it's not enclosed, but it's uh, not in the uh, line of sight. And the shower is is in is found in another niche next to it. You get a view of the garden and as a centerpiece, there is this uh, washstand and the bathtub as a highlight of the furniture. And this is the combination. Here we have this kind of uh, matte tile, uh, the metro um, tile uh, with the uh, rough looking tile on the floor in order to create you know, the effect. That's why we select these two materials. The last project is something that is very dear to us. This is a building from the 1950s, multifamily home, made by Bruno Lambert. We purchased it from his family. And we worked together with an art historian to um, work out a um, renovation project. We learned a lot about this house. 
It was um, designed by Bruno Lambert as a residential house, um, and uh, that included his office too. And D. always said it was the base of his existence. And this is quite emotional when you hear about this, the history of a house. And uh, we got all of the hand drawings um, of the house uh, from his uh, widow. And this is a picture from the 1950s. And this made us uh, look more closely at this time. There's a photograph of Bruno Lambert and his colleagues. This is from the home, was taken on the inside. And this is what fascinates us uh, with regards to 1950s, this desire to move up again and to um, bid farewell to the experience of the war and to restructure society and to build new things and to rebuild the country. Uh, there was this uh, um, um, pioneering spirit, and we felt that in the building. This is the staircase. This is the original staircase, so we renovated it very carefully, and the facade, the facade was um, reworked. This is a special kind of clinker stone on the outside. This stone has a certain, um, a spe very special surface, and we. Uh, rebuilt the original uh, building to the skeleton. Um, there was not much of the original maintained on the inside, but especially the bathroom. Here you can see uh, one of these uh, uh, one of these uh, floors. Um, there's a big uh, uh, living room the front and to the rear a closed off uh, kitchen. That was uh, customary at the time. Then on the right, uh, with the ventilation, we have the bathroom. And our idea um, was that we would uh, move um, the kitchen to the front, move the bath back, and give it some daylight. And um, then there is uh, the apartment uh, on the ground floor, in the middle on the left, we have the uh, garden uh, floor and the first floor. And um, a former garage was integrated. And uh, we had to work with a low uh, ceiling height but we wanted to achieve good quality. This is the appearance of uh, the flat to show you the character of the inside. This is the kitchen on the ground floor. So here we have the position of the bathroom, the former garage. And these are the materials used. They um, are based on the facade and the use, uh, or rather the inside uh, design, a lot of wood. And uh, all of these elements and colors are taken from the facade. We have worked with uh, a lot of um, carpentry. Um, there's the toilet in a niche, but it's not enclosed. It's an L-shaped um, wardrobe. That's where you put the towels and everything. It's integrated in the architecture, and it separates the room. So we have the bathtub and the wash basin opposite of each other as the center of the bathroom and the showers directly in front of the window. This used to be the access to the garage. And here we have a view of uh, uh, the courtyard where you can take a shower. And we wanted a clear structure of uh, the floor plan. This, uh, received to, this referred to uh, the flooring. And we were able to um, 
address um, uh, or to use the colors in, in these installations. Here we have uh, the bathroom fittings and the shower. And they connect ideally to the facade on the outside. So this is a kind of a bronze uh, um, fitting. Um, we work together with the Valona um, company. Uh, this is kind of a matte material. And the design is continued everywhere. This is the guest um, bathroom. We work with a small mosaic, but the elements are repeated all over. Well, and that's it, basically. So I hope uh, we've been able to convey how we uh, work and what kind of thinking lies behind the design of our bathrooms. Yeah, and it has to do with the context of the house and its architecture. And uh, it's very important for us not to negate what exists on site, but we want to further develop whatever already exists, and we want to create a link to uh, today. And at the beginning, I said the bathroom in the 1950s is rather small. It's a wet room. Um, that was progressive at the time. At the same time, what we found exciting about the 50s was this kind of pioneering, future-oriented spirit. And uh, we tried to move away um, from that what Sam we thought, well, this would have been along the lines of what the inventor thought of, you know, to, to get this room and dedicate it in you. Well, thank you very much for this great presentation and the insight in your timeless and stylish projects at the very end. You know, what are you working on? What will we expect next? Well, at the moment, we walk, uh, work on a living yard, a three-edge yard, a mix of an old building rehabilitation and a new building, in co completely in wood. And uh, there shall be a joint uh, living concept for, for the community, weighing how the community works as uh, related to the private use. And there, the bathroom plays an important role. And wood as a material, of course, is very important, and its integration in the combination with the bathroom. Very nice. So we'll be happy to hear more about it shortly. So let me thank for all participants. You get your certificate. If you check the email, of course, it's also in the chat with all the details. And tomorrow morning, we'll welcome you again at 8 o'clock uh, with uh, the next presentation. So enjoy the ISH during the day. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.